Dearest Master, Thank you for your loving reply to our invitation. Even if you wrote, don't think I can make it, and can't promise, we all feel and hope that you will come if it is at all possible. We need you very much in Europe right now. With this terrible war in Yugoslavia and Kosovo, and the 1.4 million refugees it has caused, many people just can't bear to see all the misery and unhappiness anymore on TV every day. We all feel so helpless when faced with so much tragedy. The only positive side to all this human misery is that many people who used to just live from day to day, not caring much what happened around them, are finally waking up and looking for more sense to life. There seems to be a more open attitude towards spiritual matters. Shadishu 都已经不忍心再看下去Sư phụ kính mến, cảm ơn sư phụ đã trả lời chúng con một cách chiều mến. Ngay cả khi sư phụ viết, không biết có thể đến được không, và không thể hứa được, tất cả chúng con đều cảm nhận và hy vọng là sư phụ sẽ đến, nếu có thể được. Ngay bây giờ, chúng con cần sư phụ rất nhiều ở Âu Châu. Cuộc chiến thảm khốc tại Nam Tư và Kosovo đã khiến cho 1 triệu 400 ngàn người trở thành người tình nạn. Nhiều người không thể nào chịu đựng nổi nữa khi thấy mọi cảnh khổ đau và buồn bã trên đài truyền hình mỗi ngày. Tất cả chúng con đều cảm thấy bó tay khi đối mặt với quá nhiều thảm cảnh. Chỉ có một khía cạnh khẳng định đối với tất cả nỗi khổ đau của loài người này là nhiều người chỉ quen với lối sống ngày qua ngày, không để ý nhiều đến những gì xảy ra xung quanh mình. Cuối cùng chợt tỉnh và tìm kiếm thêm cho ý nghĩa cho cuộc sống. Hình như họ đang có thái độ cởi mở hơn đối với vấn đề tâm linh. After a disaster, we tend to become more spiritual. People tend to become closer together, more loving, more giving, more understanding. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a great pleasure to be here, very humble, uh, to thank the Master for what happened in our lives three years ago. When my family is with me, three children. We were devastated when the doctors 
told me I'd only a short time to live. Now, we know it was nothing less than a miracle. And I wasn't a very spiritual person. I didn't know about meditating, nothing at the time. Um, we went through hell. And one day, Bernard and Marty, who was a shop in Parnell Street, I went in to talk with them. I was in a pitiful state. And Bernard showed me this little booklet, the one you got as you came in, the Key to Enlightenment. I never heard of Master. I, I didn't know nothing. I was just so full of fear and terrified. So they put me on six months of chemotherapy and said that was it. Um, tie up the loose ends. You may not live very long. And I remember sitting down in the hospital and they would be began getting six months of chemo. And it was very hard. Um, master be with me. I was reading her book in one hand. I didn't know who or what I was doing. And they were putting chemo through the other. And it was like darkness this side of me and light this side. And I didn't know. I was so confused. But gradually, as it went on, I start to lose the fear, the uh, Lord and anger and hopelessness. And I start reading these words and they were like nourishment. And then changes start taking place and the doctors are still baffled, they're confused. Dr. Daly and James's hospital, um, all the nurses, because the chemo effects, all the open sores start to disappear. I was only in three months of chemo and the chemo was really destroying my body anyway. So it turned out that I, I kept reading Master's book every time they were putting chemo. I just couldn't take the eyes off the book. And the effects start going away and I start getting healthy and looking good and the hair loss stopped as I was losing the hair. And everybody was dumbfounded. But I felt in my heart it was the Master and I wanted to know more. So I went back to Bernard and he gave me other and I read about other initiates of masters and the disciples. And so I started doing meditation and stopped eating meat. And just wonderful changes started to come into my life. Um, I just want you to know that no matter what anybody, the doctors, no matter what they say about what happened to me, I know and I, I'm speaking from my heart not for no other reason than the divine love, the God power that the Master blesses you with when you ask her and when you come to her. Sincere and loving. You can be prepared to trust. Just to feel, you'll feel it. You, you just know it. It's, it's like such a blessing. I never knew, I didn't even pray much before this happened. Um, I know sometimes I, I often prayed to God that I could see Master and I never thought it was possible because she travels so much and so far. And a few days ago I heard she was coming here and it's just unbelievable to be able to see her and be in her presence and tell her how much we love her. And I thank God for Master. And I love you, Master. Thank you. That's just an example of Master's love. Master's love is so powerful that anyone who's touched with it, their lives are transformed. It's, it's an amazing power. What you've seen on the tapes there, just a little of her abilities, not only as a, an ordinary human being, as we see her in the physical body, but her spiritual gifts and her spiritual wisdom and teaching. Master is coming here soon in a few minutes. You'll experience the love of the Master. Many people have asked me, what does this mean up here? Well, that's actually the first test for the Master. When she walks in here today, <laughs> she has to try and understand that. Uh, anybody in the audience understand this? Yes? Well, what it should read is, see God while living. 
the Supreme Master Ching Hai, and the Kuan Yin Method. The Kuan Yin Method is the method of meditation we practice. Master has now entered the room, ladies and gentlemen. Master is now making the way up to the stage. Introduce you to the Supreme Master Ching Hai. We will now have the flower and fruit offering. in a flower shop in Dublin. <laughs> Please continue, brother. I'm sorry to have interrupted you. Today's lecture is the 17th of a European trip that will take Buster through Aztec and Master from the south of Spain, up through Europe, across into the Russian countries, down to Greece, back up into the Scandinavian countries, through Edinburgh, here to Dublin, and on Wednesday, the last lecture is in London. In introducing Massa to you, I can find no words to express my gratitude to her and the love that she has flowed to everybody who has known her here in Ireland. Four or five years ago, in Honolulu, Master was awarded a very prestigious award. And the Lord Mayor of that city, Mayor Fassi, had this to say. And there's no other words I could add to than these particular words. In describing Master, he said, where there is hate, she brings love. Where there is misunderstanding, she brings trust. Where there is darkness, she brings light. She is indeed the light of the world. Master Ching Hai, welcome to Ireland. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, brother. Is that it? <laughs> is it my turn now? <laughs> How about all the people who don't have seats? Don't have any more seats? Uh, would you like to hang on the ceiling or you want to come <laughs> to sit near me on the stage? Would you like to? Anyone? Yes? There is space up the front here. People would like to sit on the floor. But the front people cannot see. They can sit on the stage. Come on, come over here. We share. All right? <laughs> It's warmer when we sit together. <laughs> yes, please sit down. Hi, <laughs> please sit down. You want to sit here? Maybe ladies sit here. If you sit here, your wife will kick me, no? No. <laughs> <laughs> <Very married. laughs> 
She don't mind? You're not married? No. Oh. <laughs> That's a dangerous situation. <laughs> okay. Are you okay, lady? You can sit here if you want, one of you. Anyhow, this is warmer. I don't need my imitation mink anymore. <laughs> it's a man next to me. <laughs> you Irish, by the way? Yeah. Native? Seaman. Sailor. Native. Sailor? Yeah. Oh, seaman? Yeah, boats again. <laughs> <laughs> I have never met a seaman next to me before. <laughs> okay, just sit anywhere you're comfortable. You can move the flower if you want to. They belong to you later, anyhow. Uh, anyone else would like to sit? Just sit anywhere, please, huh? okay? Anyhow, so good evening, my friends, <laughs> my mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters. How are you? You all right? Yes. It's very nice to be in Ireland for the first time. I heard so much about your country. So much of the sad news, as well as the very good news, and some beautiful films. America now are flourishing with Irish films, I don't know why. Do you know that? So many Irish films in America, or, or, or played by Irish even. You know, there were two sisters, the light, latest one, also Irish film. Yeah, you know that the one that played violin, huh? Cars. What's the name? The cars. The cars. Yeah, the cars. Three sisters. Two, two. Oh, no. It's about the famous um, sisters who are musician. Yeah. She, yeah, she, she's Irish. I know that, and she played in other films before. This is even Oscar nominated. Yeah, what do you do? <laughs> the Irish people. <laughs> and then your country is also blooming now with economy and development, and the house price is also blooming. <laughs> I gave up my dream of staying in Dublin. <laughs> The house, uh, the taxi driver just pointed to me and said, how much that house costs? He said, four million pounds. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> that means uh, oh, like uh, seven and a half million US dollars, right? Yes. Wow, that's a lot of money even for uh, a wealthy person. Huh? So you Irish people must be very, very wealthy then. Huh? I mean, the wealthy ones, <laughs> it's truly wealthy. <laughs> but I don't know if I, I like to, to spend so much money for, such, for, for just a house. Would you? No, huh? I would spend money for an, a, a lasting house in heaven. <laughs> okay. Are you all right there? You can put your legs down or any, be comfortable here, keep you warm. Yes. Then you can put this under your, you know what? <laughs> it's softer. This one too. Yes. Okay. I have a big man here. He's fat. Is enough to warm me up. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for coming here. And I rejoice in the renaissance of your country both in peace, prosperity, and spiritual. Because after, after disaster, we tend to become more spiritual. It is sad, but uh, at least in a thorny bush, of ro of, of, a thorny bush we have roses. <laughs> Similarly, in, um, in the late event, we have uh, like war in Kosovo, and people tend to become closer together, more loving, more giving, more understanding. Also, they have more penchant for God's knowledge, and this is a very positive side, despite the very, very sad news that we hear every day. 
But we hope that the peace is coming. It looks like it's all right. Did you see the latest news? Last night? Not yet? They didn't say anything yet? Huh? Maybe they wait for us to pray a little harder, huh? Yes, we are going to London after this, and we probably have to pray harder for Europe and for the world. I mean, our group. <laughs> of course, we ask you to join us at home. Hmm? Just sincerity is enough, because God knows everything, even though some of us don't know that God knows. We think God knows, but sometimes we are not sure, because He doesn't always give us a sign that He knows or He does not know. The reason we do not see such a sign, or we do not hear His words of comfort and advice, because our spiritual faculty has been uh, blocked for some time since, since we came into this uh, physical world, it has been blocked. Some of us um, are born uh, up to maybe three, four, or five years. We still remember everything. We might even remember the past uh, existence in another town or another country. I suppose you read newspapers some other time and you know that. And uh, many of us still remember God. We were still in the presence of God the day we were born, up to a few years. But then as we grow older, the world, the world that we live in crowds itself around us, and then we have to start learning so many things about human responsibility, behavior, duty, whatever, ever, society. <clears throat> and heap upon us, and then we begin to let go of the God's vision, which is always with us since we left heaven. And therefore, many of us have forgotten that God really exists and how to talk to Him. And that is a very pity. But nevertheless, the Bible also told us that if we uh, return to be a child, then we can enter the kingdom of God. The process of uh, returning to childhood is a process that uh, so many saints in the past have used, and we can return again to our purity, to our innocence, by turning our attention inward to the kingdom of God, which is within us, and forget temporarily the mundane worries and responsibilities. That doesn't mean that we have to leave our jobs, leave our homes, leave our uh, loved ones, and go into the Himalaya and all that. I did that because I was stupid. <laughs> But I'm going to show you that you are intelligent people. You do not have to go anywhere, and you can see God in your own living room, in your own kitchen, in your own even bathroom, excuse me. But that is the truth, because wherever we quiet our mind for even one second or one minute, we can communicate with God, and I mean literally. Even though God is formless, and we can never fathom His power or His visa, visage, uh, visage, yes, the French, huh? Vis face, huh? okay, okay, uh, His face. But as the Bible has stated, that God made man in His own image. We could see him as well in a human form from time to time if he deemed fit to reveal himself to us in such a way. Because only through a human form can we identify ourselves with our Father, because he will look like us. 
<laughs> also, only in the human form can we communicate with him, and then we will feel the love from him, and then from us. Then we will know that we truly are the children of heaven. How does this happen, that God appear in human form? God sent his beloved son to us. For example, Jesus, yes. In the form of Jesus, in the form of the human of Jesus, he communicates with us at that time, verbally, in the flesh as well. Just like the Bible say that, and the spirit uh, become flesh and dwells among men. This is one of the um, physical case that it happened when God manifests himself in a form of human being, material-wise, in, ma in a materialized manner. There's another way God manifests to us in a vision, also maybe in a human form, but it's not a physical form, but a metaphysical form. And he may choose to appear to us in a form of Jesus Christ or Buddha or other form of the Master that we trusted. And he will communicate with us, he can talk to us. Also he can talk to us in another way, like uh, intuitionally, yes? He will let us know his answer to certain prayers from us or some advice to our certain problems. Nevertheless, most of the time, we will see God in a form, in the form of light. Like Moses, when he was alive, he see, he see God appear as a flaming bush. That we can also see. We can even see more than that, because God is more brilliant than thousands of suns put together when we go into his mansion. In the, the higher the mansion, the more brilliance the light from the Lord, that even one hair, if suppose it's a human hair there, it would radiate thousands of sun's light. So in order to go back to such splendor and glory, there is a way to do it. There's a man who's enjoying God's splits. Don't, don't disturb him. I know who he is, but don't, don't look. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just happy for him. <laughs> uh, there is a way that we can uh, visit our home again whenever we wish to, and it is as simple as uh, taking the candies or eating the orange, just because we have forgotten. So everything seems mysterious and difficult to us, so much so that sometimes we thought maybe God ignores our prayers, or maybe he doesn't exist. And then we try all kind of means to know him. We even kneel for hours, we go gone fasting for days, we pray all night, and we, how say, sometimes even punish ourselves because we think we are too sinful. God would not visit such a sinner like us, etc., etc. But actually, all this is the trick of the dark force to put us down, to pressure us into submission to this physical existence. Because a child of God is always a child of God. Whatever he does, by mistake or by ignorance, is always forgivable by his Father. Once he knows the Father, everything is clear and forgiven, and from then on he never loses sight of the Father again. And this is, this is how we become happy and we become more blessed, more loving, because we become secure in the kingdom of God, even now while we are still in this physical body. And then we are certain where we are going at death.
because number one, we know already the way back and forth every day to heaven and earth, heaven and earth. I mean literally, not with the flesh, but with the spirit, we ascend into heaven and we descend into the temple of the flesh again. We can leave and go anytime we want. Also, after that, we will never, we never ever forget that God really exists because He will remind us every day. He will appear to us every day. And to some of us, when our intense longing and sincerity burns within our heart, He, he even appears 24 hours. You will eat with Him, sleep with Him, <laughs> you walk with Him, drive with Him, anything. And that to some such a blessed souls, He never fear hell, death, Anything in this world will never frighten him again. And we could, we could, all of us, or at least many of us, can attain, attain such spiritual elevation if we want. It just takes a little quiet down every day. I wouldn't say work, because all we do is just sit quiet and wait for God to come. And He comes very fast. And at the time of initiation, He comes immediately. And later on, every day, He comes. To some, immediately. To some, it takes a little while. Because, I mean, a few more minutes, or maybe half an hour longer, because our attention is wavering most of the time. And that's why it is difficult to see the Lord. It's not that he is not there. We have been trained to work in this world to do all kinds of mundane things for survival. And we spend most of our precious moments just to earn a living. And sometimes we don't even make ends meet. But to work for God, so-called work for God, it is a true blessing. It's not a work at all. Just like when we sit at the coffee break or we watch television, instead of watching the outside television, we will watch the inside television with the real a heaven splendor. And then we might talk to Christ, we might talk to Buddha, uh, whom that we trusted. We might even talk to our loved, deceased persons. And these are the talents, the ability that that we always have within us. There's nothing new that I'm going to show you. There's nothing that you do not know. There's nothing that you have to pay for, ever, ever. As long as I render any service to you, never, ever, you have to pay anything for your own kingdom. I'm just the one who walk first, so I will just show you the way, because the way is ours. The house in heaven belongs to all of us, and God the Father belongs to all of us. We are, in fact, truly blood brothers and sisters. Just the outer appearance, the nationalities, the habit that we acquire in this life separated us in some degree. Once we enter in this circle of sainthood, we enter to the kingdom of God, we will feel, we will see a definite links between all of us. We will just automatically trust each other and love each other in a way that we could not even understand compared to the way we were before. All the suspicion, the doubt, and the insecurity will disappear. Maybe the first day, Maybe the first week, maybe the first month. It depends also on your intensity of longing for God, your sincerity of uh, practice while you sit with Him, and your determination not to let the habit of the uh, running around mind <laughs> interfere between you and the Lord. And that's the only thing that that is uh, uh, may make trouble between you and God. Otherwise, 
The Bible said already, this is only the temple, and God is the one who lives within us. So if God lives here, logically we can see him anytime, provided you turn your attention to the right place. It's just now we look everywhere, we think of everything outside instead of thinking the real kingdom. And once I show you where to pay your attention, you see him because he's always there. It's just like, if you want to see me, you look right here, right? If you look to the ceiling, you look to the back, of course you don't see me, even though I'm next to you. All I do is just say, here, look right here. That is as simple as that, to see God. Because I have found it so simple, sometimes I'm also surprised that why did I not know? Or why don't anybody else, I mean before me or after me, why don't they know also? Is it so simple, so simple that you will be surprised that all this time we've been praying to God, we want to know Him, and we're just so frustrated. It's because the attention paid in the wrong place, that's all. Just like if I sit here and you look there, you won't see me. Just like Dublin is here and I keep going to London, I never come to Dublin. That is very simple. So, in many ways, all of us are the walking God, all of us are the children of God, but we live so humbly, so poorly, sometimes so miserably, sometimes like beggars, just because we have forgotten the treasure that is hidden within us. So in a few moments after this, if you feel that you want to know Him, we are going to show you practically, with no problem, <laughs> no complication. And that's what I'm here for. Very straightforward, <laughs> no, no running around. I can talk uh, until tomorrow also, but I think you would prefer to see God as your first-hand experience. And so we have divided into two groups. The one who likes to see Him all the while, you know, like up until the very highest heaven, so pre prepare to, to do anything for that then we can give the whole initiation. For other people who still feel worried whether they can keep their, for example, vegetarian diet, then we can give him a, like a half initiation just to try out whether you like it, then you can do it. You try to be vegetarian as much as possible. If you see you can, and then later you can have the whole thing. Ireland has been the fastest growing economically in Europe. So it's about time that we also grow more in spirituality. I read a lot of Bibles and Buddhist scriptures and all that before, just like you do. And all the experience of the past saints, of the past meditation practitioners has always made me wonder that there are such things as heaven, that there are such things as another kind of planet, another kind of dimension that I don't know. And uh, some of the Buddhist scripture describe some of the heaven, like, like the, the ground is, is paved with pure gold, and all the houses are made with diamonds and precious stones of all kind. And you know, you read it as a youngster and you thought it's a fairy tale. You thought this don't happen to us, this only happened to the old yogis in the Himalaya or in the Buddha's time. Or when you read about Jesus and his uh, saints, disciples, who goes to second heaven and hear the Lord, and hear the trumpet to heaven, hear the angel Gabriel, and all that. And we thought, I thought, is this is it Jesus' time? You know, we uh, we 
we can only think about it, we can only dream about it, we, we can never have this kind of experience. That's what I thought. Until I tried this way, turning my attention inward and face God, then I know everything in the Bible is true, and it's true for all time, and we can have all these experiences right now, in this modern time. Because when you think about it, in Jesus' time, we don't even have as much comfort as we do now. We don't even have enough access to uh, uh, spiritual practice or literature like now. We don't have enough communication system, transportation. Now we have even more than that. Buddha has to walk all over. Jesus had to walk. We can access to more and more comfort materially. So I do not see the difference between the human race of this time and the human race of the past time, except that we are even more intelligent, more easy to understand the logic. And we have so many spiritual informations to compare and to uh, encourage ourselves. So if we have the same experience as Jesus' disciples, that is only very logic. And even if it's not logic, we don't have to, to believe. We have to see first, because seeing is believing. Hearing the word of God <clears throat> is believing. Seeing the light of God is believing. And at that time, we can believe. So I'm just coming here to offer you the proof of God's existence, as well as to share with you the joy and happiness of knowing God, because He will bless us so much that we have a hard time to handle. Otherwise, we will complain, why God do this, why God don't uh, make this happen, when that happen. God tells us all the time things, it's just we don't hear. Because we hear something else, we turn our attention outside. So there's just one way, just turn in to hear God, turn in to see God, and then we are there. We can do that as a kid, we still can do it now. What you have forgotten, I will just remind you. And then everything will seem familiar, because we have done this before. We have also done this in other existence. Before the creation began, there was another creation. And then, after this creation, there will be another creation. And sometimes we descend again and again in some of the physical dimensions to sample experience, to rejoice in the creation of the Lord, no matter where He placed us. And then we forgot the game. Then we forgot how to go home. Then God will send some reminder to us, like Jesus, then He will leave the key with St. Peter, and then St. Peter will leave the key to someone else, and someone else will leave the key, and so the knowledge will pass on from generation to generations. And if we are longing enough to go home, someone with that key will come along and show us the gate. And that's all there is, very simple. And I think <laughs> Irish people so, who are so simple in the heart, who are so pure, would find it very logical. Is that so? Okay? <laughs> yes. I find the Irish people are so lovely, even though I heard that they are very pure. But I am still surprised when I'm here, actually. You know, yesterday, I just came and uh, I took a taxi, went all over, just to see your city. And then I say, mm, he said there's some tea and coffee house there, you know, he introduced, and I said, oh, can we go in and have some tea? It's a tea time. So he parked the car. We say you could uh, stay here, leave the meter on, and I come back later and take me home, or you come with us, have a drink, yeah, and be my guest. 
whatever you choose. It's, oh, sit too much in taxi, I'm tired. I'm coming with you. <laughs> and he turned off the meter, he parked the car, and just he walked in. That's fine. I thought, okay, never mind. I will give him some more tip later to make up for that. And then later, when I wanted to pay for my scones and my tea, he didn't want it. He said, you are in my country, I pay. <laughs> yeah, he did. I say, I am the first one who say, you are my guest. You didn't say that, so I had to pay. He said, no, is this my country? He said, my country. <laughs> he said, in Irish. <laughs> I said, okay, boss, okay, okay. <laughs> That's one instant. So nice, so nice. All the taxi drivers and the restaurants everywhere, people are so nice, so simple in the way of expression, so straightforward. There's no nonsense, no running around, no fooling you, nothing, and so pleasant. And so today, you know, I, I didn't have any breakfast and lunch, and I called it the hotel whether they have any vegetarian for me. And she said, the person said immediately, said, oh, I'm sure the chef can fix something for you. I'm going to talk to him, and then I call you back. And then, of course, they can fix something. But then, because I ate something similar yesterday, so I thought, okay, never mind. Just bring me maybe some bread and butter, and, you know, like breakfast. Is it too, too late now to order breakfast? It's late, it's late. <laughs> it's around like two o'clock, you know. Because I, I didn't have breakfast, I didn't have lunch. I normally don't have them. If I don't have to go out, I don't eat much in the morning or lunchtime. Only before I go out, then I eat something, because I know I will have a long time, and maybe I need some of the physical energy just to sit up <laughs> straight. So I said, is it too late now to ask for breakfast? Is it possible? He said, oh, of course, of course, it's late, but I can organize something like that for you. No big deal, you know? So willing and so loving. It's no making complicated everything. And then uh, she brought it up right away. And when I gave her some tips, she said, no, no, no. No, we have to take care of you. Uh, you are the guest here. Uh, you should feel at home. Said, this is my job. Don't, don't, you know, she keep refusing it, you know. And it's very rare you find such uh, staff members in hotels. You do find, but not often. And this is uh, so many instances in islands, even though I've been here for a short while, it gives me so much joy so much joy, so much happiness uh, for the people, and make me feel very much at home. So I don't think I need to talk a lot. <laughs> I think we have this affinity with each other, very good affinity. Uh, but in case uh, anything not clear, please let me know through your questions. And it is through questions that I can clear a lot of your um, you know, intellectual <laughs> Doubt. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. You write it down, please, because technically it's difficult with the microphone. Yeah. You write down. Okay. Uh, yeah. No. You keep saying the Bible all the time, like about Christ. Like, I mean, what about say different religions? Like, I'm the same man that traveled the world, and say, say, I've met Hindus, I've met Buddhists, I've met Muslims. Do you not think it's all the one? They point to one God. They just use different terms. That's why it confuses yeah. us. And I'm inclined to think yes. that really it's the people that. themselves. Yes, people make the difference with their brains, yeah. not with their soul. That's why. You see, we have two parts in us. One part is God, which is the soul, part of God. Another part is the, the computer, the brain. The brain that makes trouble. It takes in all the information and it puts out the same, regardless the flexibility of the different situation. Dear Master, what is the true form of... It's a very difficult word. Don't tell me the written word have accent as well. <laughs> of prayer, and is it a question, how can we attain to it? The true form of prayers 
is when we become one with God, that when His will becomes our will, whatever God tells us to do, we do it. And that's the truest form, form of prayers. And we can only attain to, attain to this state, attain this stage when we go inside and let God Himself teach us day by day of the way of heaven. Okay? Next question. Dear Master, does alcohol slow down the spiritual path? It even slowed down your life. <laughs> slow down your job. <laughs> slow down a lot of things. Yes, whenever you touch alcohol, you really want to live shorter than you should. That's the way it is. The body is not suitable for this kind of strong intoxication. And it damages the nerves, it dulls the intelligence, it shortens the lifespan. So it's up to you to choose to live dangerously or to live quietly. Okay? <laughs> There's so many temptations. It's difficult to resist. But if you would like to live a more healthy life, and a more active life, more productive life, then it is better to refrain from alcohol. Okay. Dear Master, why must we exist? Just existing takes up so much energy. What's our purpose? Yeah. I was wondering myself until I found God. Then He tells me everything. Why don't you find God also? And then God will answer you what the purpose of our life. He will tell you what is your mission, and then you will just walk your way without any problem. Are human beings <coughs> the only species with souls? Human beings are not the only species with souls. Yeah? There are many more. If there is no reincarnation, is there ever an eternal hell? No. No such thing as eternal hell. It would be a very, 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 very terrible, cruel God who makes eternal hell. Can you think of the logic? Whatever we do, doesn't matter how bad, how terrible, it's short-lived, it's temporary. How can it be measured by eternal hell? How can a God who is so just even measure such an eternal punishment for a, a, a limited actions, however bad it is? Right? Next question. Yeah. A truly enlightened master never claims to be enlightened. I think your claim to allow your disciples to claim your enlightenment is your publicity. So, if I say I'm unenlightened, what am I here for? Hmm? You want to talk to a stupid person? You want to listen to a stupid person? Unenlightened? If I'm unenlightened, you are unenlightened, everybody unenlightened. What, what, for we, what are we coming here for? Hmm? Well, if a doctor tells his patient that, I'm sorry, I have to be humble, I'm not a doctor, then what do the patients do? God has told me to tell you, or else I also don't care. I, of course, agree with you that I prefer to keep my identity quiet and live a more peaceful life, yeah? A more ordinary, undisturbed life. Instead, I have to run around the world, sometimes with sickness, sometimes sleepless, just to tell you the news, just because I do it as His will. I don't want to do it myself. Look at Jesus. What happened to him when he claimed that he's enlightened? We, one of us have to sacrifice. And when God tells you to sacrifice your life for others, you just do it. With no question of humility, no question of worrying, no question of your own reputation and safety. So here I am, I just tell you the truth. Maybe you don't believe that I am enlightened, and that is fine with me, but I can prove to you 
that you will be enlightened the moment you sit down with me. And that's the only important thing to you. All right? <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> Dear Master, can meditation lift depression and fear? Yes, yes, of course, of course. When God comes, everything that is ungodly will disappear. If not immediately, then in time. And very quickly, very quickly. Yes. Dear Master, <clears throat> why does God love us? Why not? Are uh, you having so much a terrible complexity that you feel you are unworthy of God's love? The father always loves his child. Yeah? He is our father. Of course he loves us. There's no question about that. <laughs> Dear Master, what happens to us after death? Ah, that's a long answer. <laughs> okay. What happens, it depends on how we live our life. You see, the God within us is the one who decides where we go after we die. You have three choices. At the time of death, normally we will be greeted and surrounded by enlightened beings such as angels, past master, Christ, Buddha, or whomever, yes? And because they work to, they're all together, they are sons of God. But then, depends on our consciousness at that time, our conscience also. If we think that we did all terribly things in life, then our conscience will blind us from this possibility of communicating with these light beings. And we will think that we deserve some punishment. So we sink into a lower level of consciousness. Uh, maybe you call that hell. And if we do all the right things in life, then our conscience will allow us to ascend into a better place, which is called heaven. But heaven has many also levels. If we are uh, like normally good, then we are in a normally heaven. If we are extraordinarily good, we are in a higher heaven. If we are completely enlightened, like Jesus, Buddha, they go where God is. So these are three choices at the time of death. We make this choice already while we are living by acting out what we want to be. If we want to be God-like, then we act like loving person, compassionate, giving, understanding, forgiving, and holy, etc. If we want to act uh, on the contrary to God, then maybe we don't we do not follow the command, the Ten Commandments. We try to do everything that is contrary to the teaching of Jesus, for example. Then at the time of death, the habit thinking that we would think in that way. And so this thinking will not allow us to go into a higher heaven. And if, by the way, we practice enlightenment, we see the light of God every day, then of course we go where the light goes. That's where God is. Okay? Dear Master, I believe in the light and sound, but you do you consider that Christ was the only Son of God? Christ is the only Son of God. Because Christ is not a person. Christ is a power that emanates from God, who creates the universe, also who can bring the creation back to Him. And Christ, this power, at that time, has manifested fully in the person of Jesus. So we call him Jesus Christ. That means Master Jesus. Just like we call him Buddha Gautama, means Master Gautama. Buddha Christ are the same name for this extraordinary, only one power, which we can say the only Son of God. So this Son of God, this only power, can choose to manifest any time on this planet or any planet in order to save mankind or other beings and bring them back to the Father when they are ready. 
dear master, if you feel you do not deserve to feel God within you, is there a way of getting beyond this fear? Well, I don't know why you fear such thing. It is very, very unnatural that we fear the Father, you know that? We should fear when we do wrong things. We should fear when we are lonely without God. But we should never fear when we are having the opportunity to see God. So please overcome that. Just do whatever your heart tells you and not the brain tells you. The brain is a terrible thing. Thank you. Dear Master, you talk about the inner melody that can heal all wounds. What does this melody sound like? No, it sounds like, almost like um, uh, outside instruments sometimes. For example, if you hear the bagpipe, the Scottish bagpipe, the harp, the flute, they also resemble <coughs> the inner sound. Except that the, the outer sound can re relieve us to, for, to some extent our stress and sorrow for a temporary period. Sometimes it's, it doesn't, but the inner sound, the inner melody of heaven will continuously play in 24 hours once we open our spiritual ear, so-called spiritual ear. We can hear it all the time, and it heals our wounds, and it will teach us all the wisdom of the universe. Whereas the outer music, music can only, only make us happy, you know, temporarily, but does not teach us any wiser things, and do not change ourselves uh, to become a more intelligent, or more loving, or more pa compassionate person. So the inner music will do all that. Yes. Dear Master, I believe that fear and darkness do not exist. They are only the absence of love and light. But yes. a blessing ignored can become a curse. So how can I bless people with my understanding without putting them at risk? Without what? Putting them at risk. At risk? Risk, yeah. Oh. Everyone has to come to the decision to find God by himself. We have no way of persuading people except to show them the logic and reasons, and they decide, yeah? So if God bless you with understanding, you keep it. Most of the time, when we say to people about our own experience, we get humiliated and suspicion, and that's the way they kill Jesus. So actually, I also myself advise our brothers and sisters to keep their mouth quiet and don't talk too much about the experience of heaven. But nevertheless, as I'm doing my job, I have to tell you some of it. The things I tell you are just a fraction of what I know, and just a fraction of what you will know and you will experience. So. Even if I tell you everything, you probably would scold me more <laughs> than just saying I'm, you know, blasphemous, you know. I just say just a little bit only, and you already think it's not possible. <laughs> so wait until you know what I know. Hmm? So most of the time, such understanding like you, like yours, or such a uh, blessed with inner vision, we keep quiet unless God order us to tell, then we do it. Dear Master. Are I'm, you all right, love? Maybe yes, someone get, else? I'm can... getting better, thank you. Yes. It's working, the sweetest. Yeah, all right. the candy. I'm glad to read that you are a vegetarian. Can you explain why it is important in life to oh, be vegetarian? Why it is important, yes. yes. It is important because we and all lives in this planet are linked together by an invisible chain. And if uh, one piece of the chain broken, things go wrong. And because it's invisible, we do not know. 
Otherwise, how do we explain all these disasters or the killing or the war in this planet? When you go inside and meditate on God, He will show you that compassion is very important. And compassion extends to all beings as well, even animals. Then you will know how important it is. In the Bible, uh, God has said that He makes men and make all the herbs in the field and all the vegetable for us as our food. And then he said, then I make animals also for, to befriend you, to help you, and you will rule over animals. But he did not mention that we should eat them. Dear Master, is it possible to see Krishna, Jesus, and Buddha simultaneously? Or is it better to desire the vision of one Divine Master? Yes, it's possible to see them simultaneously. Some, some of our brothers, sisters do. But sometimes God plays jokes. Like the Buddhists will see Jesus and the Christians see Buddha. <laughs> yes, just for fun. Then to let them know that they are working with God and they are one God. Dear Master, is there any purpose for reincarnation? Mm. Yes, uh, if the soul decides that he wants to come back here for some special reason, to uh, sample more experience on the planet, or to help somebody that he loved and he has not finished in this lifetime. But rarely, the person has to reincarnate in the same place again, because there are many other places to be reincarnated into. Yes. Master, what is the truth? <laughs> you stay behind and I show you, okay? The truth cannot be just spoken in language. It has to be experienced by yourself. <clears throat> the truth is God. And the truth will make you know God. The truth will teach you that you are one with God. Dear Master, is heaven reached through sensitivity or through logic? Through going there yourself. It's not by talking, not by reasoning, but by actual seeing heaven in your inner vision that you know heaven. Dear Master, is all suffering and disease our own free will, or does God play some part in it? It's our own free will. Yes, when we do something uh, that is um, not suitable for the body, then of course the body gets sick. Yeah. For example, if we smoke too much and we sometimes get lung problem, and the person who sits next to us also have secondhand smoke problem, for example, me, <laughs> secondhand smoke victim, and if we drink too much alcohol, then you get drunk, a hangover, headache, and maybe some other complication uh, concerning alcohol and consumption, a thing like that, yeah? And there's other things that we do unconsciously, which will also af affect the body, and it busts out in sickness. All these things can be uh, remedied by turning to God again and let Him heal our shortcomings. Master, I believe God's Spirit and love is in us all. And I also believe His love and light also shines through our animals. Do you believe this? Of course I believe it. I see it. Dear Master, it's very unusual for someone to give of the, their time and experience without reward. Thank you for taking time out on a busy weekend to share your enlightenment. Remember me, my family, and a special needs group 
in your prayers. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Dear Master, you said that God can lift depression and fear. How can one who is suffering from depression and fear be healed? Yes, by coming to God again. By coming to the God inside you. We suffer a lot, all of us, in different ways. We have different fears because we have lost touch with the Father, which is the source of all blessing, all power, and all security. So by coming back home, we will have everything we need. But this is not by talking that I can make you understand by your own experience that you will know this. So I invite you to come to God again and let me help you to see him. And later you will be always with him. You don't need me no more. I'm here only for today. Yeah? And then I leave you with God. <laughs> no problem. So if you ask me thousands more questions, it will just help you intellectually. It doesn't heal your real suffering. Only God can. Dear Master, what is the meaning of our life in this world, if any? We come here so that we can know God. That's the only meaning of human life. Many of us forgotten. That's how we suffer. That's why we suffer. Yeah. Dear Master, can I achieve salvation by following the teachings of Jesus? If so, why do I need another teacher? If you understand all what Jesus has said to you and you practice it, then you get salvation. I'm afraid the levels of enlightenment of the Lord Jesus sometimes too high for us. So unless you get enlightened yourself, you cannot understand all that the Master wants to teach us. I'm here to offer you the way so that you can understand his teaching deeper and have the real practical side of his teaching and bring the healing and love into your life. Just the words of Jesus, and, you, and if we don't understand completely, it is difficult to get true salvation. Although, if you keep the Ten Commandments and you be a good man, you will enter heaven, but this temporarily. Dear Master, my mother died unexpectedly two months ago. How can I be sure she is at rest? And is there anything I can do to help her on her way to a lighter heaven? Is there any way I can communicate with her now? Uh, some of our brothers and sisters, when they meditate, they can communicate with their loved ones on so-called the other side. And by the way, the good news is the one who get initiation will benefit his five, seven generations, whether he knows them or not. For example, your deceased father, mother, will be also uplifted to a higher heaven if they have died through your practice of the light. Because of the bloodline, you will also um, bless the deceased relatives through your initiation. Five, seven generations at least will be saved by one person who are enlightened. Dear Master, what happened when you became enlightened? Did you hear a bell like Muhammad? Did you have a vision? Please tell us. Yes, yes, yes. That's just the beginning. You can hear the bell, yes. You can hear the angel speak. Or you might see Jesus, you might see Buddha, you might see Mohammed, you might see God, you might see all the masters, you might see the light only, you might hear the bell only, you might hear more other things higher than the bell. The bell is only the lower level, just for beginners. 
But some beginners have higher experience than that. I'm sorry if I have offended you. It has to be the truth, and I speak the truth at all cost. Dear Master, how can one express one's divinity? Divinity? Divinity, divinity. Yes. Divinity? Yeah. Express it? Yes. Only when you know it, then you can express. When you know that you have the divine within you, you enlighten, you contact this divine, divinity quality within you, then only then you can express it. We cannot express what we don't know. We cannot express what we don't recognize. Or if we don't recognize, we don't know that practically we don't have it. So we can't express it. Okay? That's how Jesus expressed his holiness, because he became holy himself. Yeah, he became one with the divine. Master, do, do angels, spiritual guides, exist? How important are they in our spiritual evolution? Is it easier to communicate with them than with God? Mm. They do exist. First, um, they exist everywhere. Just that our spiritual eyes are not open, we don't see them. And when we are enlightened, we can see them. Some people are not even uh, um, deliberately doing any meditation, but they have some previous experience of blessed by other master by gems. They also see angels, yeah, and see spiritual guide. They will help us to a certain extent, but only God can help us all through. So uh, in the beginning, the angels and the spiritual guides probably just stand by, yeah, and help us a little bit in the basic requirements. And later, we will become our own master, and God is our only guide. But the angels are around all the time, no problem. They will be our servers, they will be our helpers. Dear Master, when you say that our lives are continued, from generation to generation, are you talking about reincarnation? Yes, I do. But when I mentioned before, means uh, the key of knowledge passed from one generation to the next. Hmm? Yeah, next one. Dear Master, I try to practice open-mindedness towards other people's weakness but sometimes struggle and get frustrated with my own compassion. How can I overcome this? Continue struggle <laughs> until you get used to it. When we have compassion for other people, we sh must have it unconditionally, so we don't get uh, frustrated and hurt when they don't return our love. Hmm? And we can do that the way Jesus did, practice the kingdom of God, knowing God, and give what God gives from inside. And we don't feel that we'll be drained. Yeah? It's difficult to love all beings with equal love, but you try your best. Love your family members first. Love them with all your heart or your mind. And then practice the presence of God. Then later you can love mankind as much as you love your family members. Dear Master, Master Wu of Chu spoke of a great separation. Must we, sorry, love? Wu, W U. Oh, Master Wu. Okay, okay. What about him? He spoke of a great separation before which all life on the planet shared consciousness. Do you believe we are approaching a new age of shared consciousness? Wow, I'm impressed that the Irish people even know Master Wu before <laughs> Lao Tzu. That's why I'm a little bit... <laughs> uh, okay, okay. <laughs> no, he talks about some uh, metaphor, you know, some things that before the creation sprung into being, yeah? There was a great separation because God thinks and then it becomes. God wants to divide himself 
so we separated from him. So also it seemed into different individualized forms so that we can feel the separateness from God. And then through this separation, we have to return by the, the power of longing to go back to the self itself. And then, then we wish we will join together in the same consciousness. And that's when we have a shared consciousness, and back to the origin. Yeah? And the thing you talk about is the new age, a new, gen, a new golden age, right, for example. Uh, it depends on us. If more and more people uh, elevate their consciousness into a higher level, then of course we approach a new golden age. Uh, if not, uh, then you know what happens. Yeah? And therefore, many of the teachers, and I myself, were commanded by God to run around like this <laughs> and share in the knowledge of uh, what I know, what He wants me to know, and what He wants you to know, until everyone uh, become, you know, shared in the real knowledge of God. And then we can approach the golden age, of course. That's, let's hope it will be so. I guess uh, we are coming to it, yeah? Because a lot of people turn into spirituality now, and uh, a lot of people became vegetarian for not only health reason, but for compassion and religious reason. So the planet is becoming better and better. It's just that we have to work harder. I mean, for example, me, I'm a little lazy. Unless he push me, I don't go nowhere. <laughs> I just don't know how to speak the truth which I know in my heart. Sometimes I tell God, it is so difficult, God, could you find someone else? Because I don't know how to speak about you. I only know you, I can love you, I can see you, but it's so difficult to talk in language about you. The more I talk, the seems I don't make enough glory about you, and I feel incomplete in my heart. I feel frustrated. Yeah, but that's the way it is. I just have to introduce to people, and then they choose it, and then they decide, and then they enter the kingdom of God, then they will know it themselves. And that's the best way. Language is not particularly the best vehicle for God's explanation. Everyone who knows God knows this. Some meditations say to concentrate on the Dantian. Some on the what? Dantian. You know. uh, Dantian, oh, solar plexus, yeah. What? S some say to focus on the heart. Kuan Yin says to focus on the third eye. I have tried them all. Some friends have warned me that it is dangerous to focus on the third eye. What will you advise me, please? It is dangerous to focus anywhere without proper guidance because we have forgotten so much about ourselves that we should learn it from ABC again. Uh, Tantian is a Chinese word for the solar plexus, which is, um, you know, around your stomach here, yeah, around the, the navel, down the navel, lower, yeah. This uh, this chakra, uh, this center of the body, is also a center of energy. We have many centers of energy in the body, just like in a nation, we have different powerhouse. We generate electricity to the whole city or the whole country, yes? In our body, we have many different centers for concentrated spiritual power as well as willpower. We have it uh, on the, under our feet, we have it uh, in, in our knees, we have it in our sexual organs, we have it at uh, our stomach here, solar plexus, we have at the heart, we have at the throat, <laughs> we have it here, we have it there, we have it there too. Yes? So the highest um, gate for us to leave this physical body when we die is the third eye center, the wisdom center. So in order not to confuse and go the wrong way around, go downward into a lower level of creation, we should practice going and coming through this gate while living, because God sits there, the wisdom sits there. So I do not want to uh, take up too much of your time by teaching from the feet upward, which you can do. 
In the old time, people live until 800 for thou or 1,000 years. They can have fun doing all kind of upside down, inside out thing. We don't have time anymore. Our life keeps shorten despite our technology advance. So we make it quick. We must practice where it is important, where it's the only way to get in and out of the body for the higher level of, of, of love. So that's why I teach you to do it here. But any center at all, you must learn it properly. There are the do's and don'ts to protect yourself. And that's why it takes a few hours to sit with you, one or two hours to sit with you, to tell you what you should pay attention to. The enlightenment takes seconds, but the instruction so that you know how to do it yourself at home every day takes an hour or so. All right? Okay? Yeah. That's all, that's all the questions we that's have. That's it? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. You didn't throw any away? <laughs> Okay, all right. Thank you for being so patient and so sincere. Uh, if you like to know God, straight, simple, <laughs> and no nonsense, then stay behind and let us know your name, yeah, so we can call you. And if you just want to try God, then you can also let us know, like, you know, taste of it, yeah, very quick one, take around half an hour with you, the full initiation take maybe two hours, yeah? So uh, if you have time, yeah, and you want to know God, that's it. Very simple, no much problem. And thank you very much, and if you choose to know God another time, then may He bless you in whatever you choose to do. And thank you very much for your presence. You bless me very much. Thank you, thank you. <laughs>